Despite rising inflation and record high gas prices, the consumer is still spending, and that could be attributed both to stimulus savings and higher wages. In fact, new proprietary data from Bank of America shows the rise in net wages actually outpaced inflation last month, and it's millennials and lower-income workers seeing the biggest pay bumps. Joining me now is David Tinsley, senior economist at the Bank of America Institute. Great to have you here, David. And you were able to kind of give a broader measure of earnings. Is that right? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on. So basically, uh, Bank of America obviously has a lot of customers. And in this database, we're using 9 million of our customers with anonymized data, of course. And we're looking at pay rises uh, year on year in that data set. And we're finding the net annual rise of about 9.2%. So, yeah, as you're saying in your intro, a bit above inflation of 8.3%. So some real pay growth. Across the uh, across the data set. That said, even if there's nine percent growth and eight percent inflation, that's not going to feel that great to people. So you can understand why sentiment has kind of been as dim as it has. But where are you seeing the most hopeful signs, the biggest uh, pay gains? Well, you know, this is really interesting. That if you look at the age distribution split of that data, you see Gen Z and millennials receiving really strong rises. So for Gen Z. It's, it's close to 20% for millennials, just above 10%. And then when you cut the data just to look at people who have changed the firm, you can see that the average pay rise across the whole data set is around 20%. Wow. So very strong, very strong increases for people who are prepared to uh, move jobs. Basically, you want to be young and move jobs, and then you're going to get that big rise. Wow. All right. So what are your takeaways from this as we debate the Fed's next steps? Because this is the key for inflation and the economy. In, in some ways, the labor market is too tight. Uh, what does the data tell us? That's a good point. So basically, what our data shows is that it certainly has been very tight if you look at the number of people moving jobs every month. What we're seeing in our data, and I think this is borne out by some other data sources out there currently, is a whiff of calling off in the labour market. There's some sense that the, the job change data we're looking at is eased back. Uh, but the big caveat I would really need to underline is this is easing back from white hot levels. So we're re really looking at a labour market that maybe going, going, going to hot from white hot, if you like. And so what would you say, because, for example, you find that those earning below $50,000 have seen an average pay rise of 11.5%, which is great. Those with incomes above, less than an 8% gain. So a lot of this has really paid off for lower-income workers. We're now starting to see signs of startup companies laying off workers, especially technology companies slowing hiring and things like that. Um, when people want to extrapolate that to, say, a drop in the monthly payrolls report, does your data support that or suggest that that's jumping too much to that conclusion? I think that's jumping the gun. And the reason is partly because of this rotation we're seeing in consumers from spending on goods during the pandemic to spending on services. And as that rotation occurs, there are always going to be some losers in that rotation in terms of businesses. And I suspect some of the job announcements the negative stories you've seen are from pe for people who weren't counting on that rotation or maybe slightly overdid it in terms of building up the, the labour base during the, uh, the pandemic period. I don't think you can read across into an underlying deterioration yet. Our data says it might be easy, but really from very strong levels. And finally, I don't know, I... I can't tell from behind you if you're work from home or not, but anything you can tell us about the impact work from home is having and its likeliness to stick around? That's a good point. I mean, there isn't a lot in the data I've presented to, uh, in the report that would, uh, would illustrate that. I think what I can, I can say is that, you know, just from my own experience, is that uh, I think some partial kind of... Uh, it's basically, I think, there is some rebound in services that are indicative of the return to office as well. Hmm. But there's still some residual, I think, stickiness there. Yeah, and some stickiness uh, that you know, we certainly pick up on in terms of what employees want to do right now.
David, it's been great to have you today. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.